um, we want to keep most of her length actually. We just want to give her a little uh, sexier, wispier, piecier kind of look around her face. She's got some curl in her hair so she should be able to wear this either curly or straight. I'm going to start by creating a fringe for her. She has no frontal fringe at this point in time. and. The biggest question people have sometimes is exactly where to put the fringe. The first thing I look at is the forehead and the size of the forehead as far as the size and the shape of the forehead to see where I think that needs to lay. I feel like she could do a long sweepy bang um, and just kind of blend that right into the frontal fringe. Trying to determine exactly where to put the fringe and how much fringe to put in is always the biggest question that I get from a lot of stylists. I look at the forehead to determine how short or long I want it to be and on she has a mid-length forehead so on Trisha's hair uh, I feel like we want to cut this just a little bit on the long side she also has natural curly hair and fine naturally curly hair so I want to keep that in mind when I'm creating that fringe because fine and natural curly means it's going to shrink up a lot so I'm going to probably cut this extremely long once I determine how much of it I want to incorporate a rule of thumb for me would be to lay this comb right on the top of the head and look to see where the air is or, or the space is or where it ends on that comb and that's where I would section this off from. Now some people will choose to have a little thicker bang area or fringe area. Uh, that works out really well for me just to have somewhere to start. Because I'm going to do a swoopy bang, she's going to go from right to left. So what I want to do is pull this to the left so that the shorter side will be on this part. So it'll help encourage or push the hair in that direction because short hair pushes long hair. I'm going to pull this. I'm going to converge this down. I'm probably going to go right about her lip. I can always take more hair if I need to. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to use my sweet tater and just pinch that hair and then cut it to my desired length. Now when I comb that, it's just going to sweep across her face and I can already tell I probably want to take that just a little bit shorter. Okay, I'm going to take this just a little bit shorter, I'm going to pinch that hair and I'm going to shoot for the top of the lip this time. I'm going to take the sweet taters cut and then release. Yeah, that's going to be perfect. beautiful curl in this hair. She will either be able to scrunch this this particular cut or flat iron and straighten it. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Perfect length. Now what I want to do is part this off from ear to ear. We're doing the beach babes. I'm going to band this forward. I parted this off from ear to ear because I want most of this layering for this section to be in the front. So I'm going to take this hair, pull it to the center of her forehead. Alright, now we've got her banded. I've got this length right here. I, I may, am going to end up connecting this to this length, but I want to start this length about three or four inches longer, like right, right below her chin. Um, the reason why I want to do it that way, again, this is naturally curly hair and I have to be really careful not to cut this so short that we have a bi-level look where this hair is shorter in the front and longer in the back and disconnected. I want all of this to blend together and have a nice blend. I'm going to stick with my sweet taters and cut it to my desired length. I'm going to release that. Then I'm going to go through with my razor and connect that frontal fringe to this link down and through here. I'm going to do a little bit of C shaping and slide cutting to get that to work out. I want the part doesn't have to be perfect for uh, where, she apps, where she wears it on a regular basis, but it needs to be relatively close. We are going to use the heated hot razor to do this cut, to do this facial fringing. I'm going to part this off about an inch section. Again, pull this hair out from where it lives. I'm 
And just go through and blend that all together. I'm going to go through and do that one more time. Straight down from where it lives. And go through and blend that in. Just so we have these little piecey, fringy pieces right around the front of her face. I'm going to take this section from behind the ear just a little. Pull it straight down from where it lives. And blend this in. Again, I'm going to just come right down and just do a little more blending. And do the same thing on the other side. Take about an inch section. Come this back out of my way. Pull this straight down. I like to make a couple of passes because I'm not being very aggressive with this. The razor is heated. The heated part of the razor helps to close down the cuticle. When you're working with naturally curly or dry hair, that is very important. And it does get really hot. Hot enough that you can be concerned with burning yourself with it. One more pass right here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and band her so we can cut the back section. I'm going to comb this hair straight up to the apex of the head or the, the highest point of the head. I'm going to pull this hair straight up from where it lives. I'm going to cut it on an angle because I do want to save her length. And this piece right here is her length. I just want to remove some of this layering in between. So I'm going to switch my comb for my curved shear. And then I'm just going to go in here and release this hair in between. Make sure that I didn't miss any. There we go. And then I'm going to pull this band out and switch back to my comb. You can see where doing this technique helps this hair to lay more in sort of a V or a U shape than that straight across layered shape. That way, right? Now I actually want to finish the rest of this cut while her hair is dry. So I'm going to go ahead and take her and style her out and then come back and fine tune this and tweak it when, it, when we get it dried. We just completed Trisha's finished look and you can see how we've got a nice little shape right here around her face. We've left her with a long sweepy bang and we've continued with the shape here. We could go in and texturize this even more or layer this more, but sometimes when you get into, she has naturally curly fine hair. When you get into that kind of hair texture, the more texturing you do, the choppier it starts to look. So for her length of hair, I've decided just to leave the layering in the perimeter and just around the front.
I use the Banica Long Sea Shaper, the Banica Fish Bone, the Banica 8 inch Sweet Tater, the Vibra Style Heated Vibrating Razor.